So Rose, tell us about this picture. I, I believe Kate was very young at that time. Well, what had happened was uh, mo many of the shows took place at Bryant Park, and I was actually uh, exiting Bryant Park. Um, th there had been, you know, huge tents um, that were erected there, but this was outside the park, and I suddenly looked up, and I saw this angelic, looking young beauty holding a little gift bag. So I believe that she had attended a show rather than been in a show, but there would be many shows during the day. There might be 10 shows a day. Uh, at any rate, I just looked over at her. She was with uh, some uh, guy at the time. I think he was a musician. I don't really remember. But I believe took one picture, and most people who have seen it say they have never seen her looking more beautiful ever. But I think it's before she became the most famous model in the world, and that's how she's described now. So talking about just just knowing she was going to be incredible. And I have hundreds of images of her uh, at shows, at parties. Uh, she's one of my absolute all-time favorite models. And you are one of the first photographers to go behind the scene and yes. go outside of the usual locations to take your pictures. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, again, I had different relationships with public relations people, and so I would be able to get a special pass that allowed me to go backstage um, in for some of the designers, uh, not all of them, but a number of them. And I remember I actually photographed uh, Kate in a little undershirt, and she looked so fragile and so thin that uh, maybe a few years later, Esquire magazine had an article, and they said, send this model money so she can buy food. And it was my picture. So that's also a comment to say you don't always know how your picture will be used by different magazines. And my photos were published in many, many magazines around the world. And going backstage was always fascinating to me because I said that they were, they'd walk, they would enter the space to be made up and wearing jeans and a little simple t-shirt. They would never eat the food that was um, spread out for them. Only the photographers ate the food. They drank champagne. And then suddenly they turned into hothouse flowers by the brilliance of the makeup people and the hairstylists. It was just unbelievable to watch the transformation, which I could be very, very close I remember Giselle Bunch and uh, reading a book. Um, many times the models had reading material because they had to sit there for a half an hour, you know, doing nothing while uh, they were fussed over. And this story of transformation, I have the feeling that that's something that is recurring in your pictures in the sense of, you know, how people showed themselves at their best. Well, one, I had a rule that I perhaps didn't tell you. I would never take an, a photo of anyone in an embarrassing situation. And um, that all was particular uh, around many uh, male designers who were gay and didn't want the public to know at that time. Um, in the 90s, because they were afraid that they would not be able to sell their clothing around the country. And I would never again take those photos. And I was very proud of that. And I'm sure there were many photographers who didn't mind at all. Um, and the transformation, certainly behind the scenes, and even on the runway, I mean, watching Naomi on the runway was just almost an unbelievable experience. Um, her movement, her the way she showed any garment or all. And you know the line that Linda um, Evangelista shared with the public, We ne oh, I never get up for less than $10,000. And you know what? They were worth it. And I always said that because 
this trinity of models, again, you had Christy and you had uh, Naomi and you had Linda, uh, a little bit Cindy, but she wasn't as famous, I think, as the three. Well, they could sell anything. And I, I, I was fascinated by that. Just there, they were actors, not only models. They were certainly actors. Thank you. 